So welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us in this latest in our series of Basis Technologies webinars on DevOps and test automation. As you can see on the screen today, we're going to be looking at a guide to DevOps toolchain integration in SAP. Um, definitely a topic that is coming up a great deal with the organizations uh, and customers that we work with um, as we look to help them streamline their SAP systems. Um, just a bit of webinar admin, as always, uh, before we start these things. Everybody on the call is on mute, but there is a question box you should see in the GoToWebinar control panel. So we would encourage you to ask any questions during the session. Do please put those in and we'll get to as many of those as we have time for at the end of today. Um, we are recording this session as always, and we will send a link to the recording to everybody who's registered for the webinar. So if you want to, uh, to get that link to either review any of today's content or to share it with any colleagues and you don't see it in the next day or two, do please get in touch. You can do that via our website or there'll be some details at the end of the presentation as well. So as I say, uh, very much integration is a topic that we find uh, is, is a bigger and bigger deal for many organizations who are running SAP. Um, and that's why we're, we're focusing on that in today's session. So let's take a quick look at the agenda that's on the screen there um, and what we're gonna talk through. Uh, we're gonna to touch on why integration matters, why this is something that is coming up more and more commonly in conversations about how we can automate and streamline uh, our IT systems and SAP landscapes in particular. We're gonna to, we're going to touch on what the challenge is in SAP and around SAP in terms of connecting with the wider IT landscape. Uh, we're going to talk through a few examples of tooling and look at some analogies of how we can achieve the same outcomes within SAP. And then the main part of today's presentation, and probably the most important part, is uh, we're going to go through some specific examples of how we can integrate change and release in SAP with a wider IT tool, tool chain and with some more standard tools that we might use more typically in a development delivery process. And then as I say, uh, as time allows, we'll, we'll go through some Q&A um, as that comes in through the session. So before we begin, you, you might be able to see some names on the video screens there uh, in the GoToWebinar panel, but a couple of introductions. My name is Peter Yabsley. Uh, I'm the head of product marketing here at Basis Technologies. If you've joined a Basis Technologies webinar before, you will no doubt have heard my voice. You may not have, have seen my face, but in the, in the brave new world of, uh, of Zoom and conference calls and video sharing, we're, uh, we're now visible to you all to see. And uh, you can see also there my colleague, Jim Duggar, who's our senior technology evangelist, who's joining us from our Dallas office today. Jim, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. So Jim is certainly the most important person in today's session. He's going to take us through the main bulk of the content. Just before we do that, um, a quick introduction for anyone on the call to Basis Technologies in case you're not familiar with who we are and, and what we do and why we're running this series of regular webinars about DevOps and testing. So at Basis Technologies, we create software automation that helps our customers to change the way they run SAP. And principally, we do that by enabling them to bring concepts like DevOps and continuous delivery into their SAP environments, which is something that we can't typically do with the tools that are available. Um, so we offer the most complete DevOps and test automation platform that very importantly is specifically engineered for SAP. That's really the key, and you'll hear some of that in today's webinar and why that's so important um, to cope with the uniqueness of SAP and, and bring those new ways of working. We're very much a global company. We've uh, we've been providing SAP auto automation solutions for more than 20 years. Uh, we have our headquarters in London in the UK, as I've mentioned, an office in Dallas, uh, also offices in Europe and, and down in Sydney, Australia as well. So really covering the globe. And you can see some logos of the kind of organizations that our software helps um, in terms of how they run their SAP systems and how they manage and deliver change. So some of really the biggest users of SAP with very large and complex estates but we also work with a lot of organizations that have maybe a simpler SAP footprint, but still get a lot of benefit from, from using automation and automating some of the processes around uh, change and release and testing in there. And as you can see, we're, our, our solutions are fully SAP certified on both S4 and NetWeaver as well. So that's a, a, a quick intro to Basis Technologies. We've been talking about DevOps and testing and, and associated topics like integration and continuous delivery for some years now. Um, and as I mentioned, integration is definitely a topic that, that seems to be coming up more and more. 
So right now, I'm going to hand over to Jim to take us through uh, through that agenda that I talked about and the content of today's webinar, and I'll be back to uh, to go through some of the questions at the end. So Jim, over to you. Thanks, Pete. And uh, good morning, good evening, uh, good afternoon to, to those of you joining us from, from no doubt around the world, as these webinars often are. Um, I'm going to take us through a chat today about DevOps tooling and integration in SAP and helping align SAP to uh, the way that business is done in software development outside of SAP as well and, and, and why some of those requirements are. So let's talk a little bit to start this about why integration matters and you know, why this is a topic that's worth our time. And, and I would open that by saying, you know, the good news for us as SAP professionals is we, we are the hub of the wagon wheel in terms of how our business depends upon a system, how it uses and operates the, the organization on that platform. It's great news for us because we are the center of how work gets done in our organization so often. We're such a critical system. But at the same time, because we're a critical system, I think we have to realize that we're going to be asked to do things like provide the business process and data backends for web experiences and mobile experiences and other types of application access that aren't traditional SAP, but nonetheless are the way that organizations and customers are interacting with the back end. And, and as we've seen those kinds of requirements come to play, we've also started to see the, the software development practices and the demands from teams writing language writing in languages like Java and C++ and these kinds of things um, lean on us because they want to synchronize their release cycles with ours. They need things quicker. They need a much faster time to market. But at the same time, of course, we have that incredible responsibility running SAP to make sure that we do it with incredible technical rigor, frankly, perfection, that the business is always available, these kinds of things. So, you know, what we've discovered from this is there's this demand for pace, but we've also got a demand for quality. We know that working in silos is not really delivering what the organization needs. And if we look outside of SAP, oh, they've got some neat tools that they're already well, uh, you know, well automated. DevOps has been a thing for a couple of decades out there. Hmm, maybe we could learn a lesson or two by looking at what our colleagues are doing. So I got to bring up a couple of topics to kind of get there. And, and this is not a presentation about Agile and DevOps. This is a presentation about integration. We're going to dig in heavy in a minute. But we have to first talk about why these things came to be and why it's causing a driver on us as SAP professionals that we have to at least listen to from outside uh, of our little area of expertise. So debt or Agile really is it was a methodology that came to be in order to support a much more iterative, much faster delivery pace and tempo. Um, and it was specifically designed around the kinds of programming and the kinds of tooling that we see in distributed environments like Windows and Unix and so on. And, and then DevOps became a thing because it became the automation and the tooling behind it. I'm going I'm to touch on all this a lot more. But ultimately, why these both became a thing is software developers looked for a way to become responsive to their businesses and their customers. How could we, with very high quality, deliver on a much more frequent basis and satisfy the market in a much more direct way, have a very agile, dynamic backlog? We're going to get into some of all this stuff. But basically, it came down to time, cost, and quality. How do we drive all three in a better way? And so if we break that down a little bit, you know, what, what is agile? Well, Agile is a software development methodology. It came to be because it was found to be a better set of practices, especially outside of SAP, for being able to in, uh, incrementally deliver on a much more frequent basis or at a higher tempo, to also help drive the quality, and to help bring things to market, features, new capabilities, those things, on a much more frequent basis. Um, you know, over my time as a software developer, I've seen us move away from a traditional development with a, a marketing requirements document to a major QA cycle to all these kinds of things. And I've seen us go to these two weeks and three weeks sprints as a pretty common norm, just because the methodology frankly worked better. It was a better way to run a software development project. And as we started to adopt Agile and see its limitations of a methodology, after all, we're doing so much stuff so more often, things like that, we realized that automation became an essential part of being able to effectively implement Agile. 
For example, if I'm doing a release every two weeks, I also need to do testing every two weeks. This completely changes our mindset in terms of how we're delivering code on a regular basis. So if I'm allowed to really oversimplify both of these topics, I would say agile is the project management practice behind running a great software development project. And I would say DevOps is the tooling that allows us to do it in a highly automated way. Now, don't send hate mail. I know those are gross oversimplification, oversimplifications, but for the purposes of our discussion, I think it's going to work. Let's talk about how we can leverage some of the agile methodology that our colleagues outside of SAP are already doing. And let's talk about how we can get the same kind of cool tools that those guys are using that do so much of the regular monotonous work for them completely automatic. How do we do that? Okay. So if I look at my colleagues, and, and, and certainly in my previous life, I, I was a C++ developer and, and a C-sharp developer. You know, when I pressed the go button on my workstation, basically an install shield or a web service squirted out on the other end. And I really didn't have to do much of the regular practice of being able to do all of that kind of work. It was done for me. Well, each project is unique. Each system is unique. Each architecture is unique. So what we need is not a single set of tools, but rather tools that understand the architectural impl impl uh, implementation and the situations that we're in in a given software project, but give us that same con those concepts that we're going to talk about here in a second of CI, CD, and these sorts of things um, that work best for our particular project, our particular organization, um, and, and, the, and the, the challenges that we're trying to solve with automation. So I'm going to dig into some examples of that and give you a little bit of background of what this kind of tooling looks like outside of SAP. So here we go. I'm going to date myself a little bit. I started my career writing C++ for Windows NT 351 and OS2. Um, there's probably some people on this webinar that have never even heard of that. That stuff's so ancient. But I will tell you this, not a single one of the icons you see on the screen existed 20 something years ago. The entirety of our common tooling, both open source and commercial, the entire discipline of Agile and DevOps, um, everything that you see, and this is a great uh, diagram of all the different tooling and all the different capacities of a release cycle in DevOps. None of this stuff existed a couple of days ago. That's how much software development has transformed in the last 20 years. This chart comes from a good buddy of mine at Harness IO, Stephen Burton. The, they, they have a, a DevOps solution for non-SAP in the cloud. But you can see all this different variety. And the truth is no customer would ever implement all of this stuff. This is just all the different examples. But what you might do is have one from each of the columns, maybe two. Maybe we adopt JIRA for doing things like backlog management, or we adopt Docker for being able to do containers for our developers and deployment of web services, these kinds of things and so on. So that's just how much it's changed. But we've got a particular challenge in SAP. All of those icons make a lot of assumptions about the underlying infrastructure and architecture of the systems that they run on. As cool as Jenkins and Docker and Chef and Puppet are, they don't work in SAP. And SAP has a very unique architecture. It's quite rigidly prescribed, and that's fine. We've just got to learn to be able to adopt the concepts that we've got outside of SAP and make them work inside of SAP. We've got to have the right technological tooling to be able to align ourselves with the way software development practices performed outside SAP and integrate with those release cycles and perform at that same level of tempo and pace, but do it in a way that makes sense in SAP and that protects the business. And, and we're going to walk through an example of several of those kinds of functionalities, dig into them in detail, and talk about how we achieve the same concept in SAP so that in your next you know, sprint planning meeting, you can bring something to your organization that says, we know how to align. We know how to work together as a team. C-sharp and ABAP are going to walk hand in hand, and this is going to work, and here's how we're going to do it. So let's touch on a couple of these examples. Um, obviously, there's gobs and gobs of this stuff out there, but I want to narrow it down and just give you a few flavors of things that exist outside SAP that we don't have in SAP yet. So the first is a version control system, and I'm going to pick on Git a little bit because this is a very popular and common one right so let's talk about what version control does for the programmer and what it does for the software development team. The, the first part of this idea of version control is to give us a configuration change manager that allows us to keep track of all the changes to the software that we're making. But it does more than that. 
not only will it allow me to check in and check out code and make modifications and orchestrate the work of you know, a lot of developers and different teams all working together in the same project, but it will allow me to do something that's called a branch. So if I can describe a branch, let's take an instance where I have a version of software but I need to also create a version of it for my European partners and maybe my APJ partners that have a separate track of features that run at the same time as the Americas. And yet when I do a production support fix, I absolutely must get those changes into the APJ code and into the European code, because if I don't, I'm gonna leave lingering regression errors and other problems in those code bases, and this is never gonna work. And in fact, if APJ then creates a feature that's really valuable around the rest of the world and need to be able to work that back into the tip of the version control system and distribute that around to all the different users of, uh, of the code. Okay, well, in a version control system outside of SAP, we have those concepts. We can create a branch, we can create uh, lots of different versions of the code, we can have completely separate development profiles if that's necessary, and then anytime we have conflicts between developers working on two different parts of the project at the same time that need to be reconciled, it will give us merge events. It will allow us to merge the code together. It will keep track of all those changes. It will prevent us accidentally reintroducing regressions and old code and old versions and all the stuff that goes wrong in our SAP environments today. This tooling was solved eons ago outside of SAP, right? So that's one example of a modern software development tool and DevOps tooling that's really, really valuable. The second example comes from a space called continuous integration. So again, outside of SAP, if I'm a developer, the moment that I hit go on the compiler, not only will it do the build for me, but then it will probably deploy my change into a QA environment. Jenkins will pick up that work and then automatically orchestrate all the unit testing and functional testing that's been automated for me and do all of that rigor and make sure that it's done every single time I hit go on the compiler. Now there's lots of other things that Jenkins will do, but it's very commonly used in orchestrating this kind of unit testing, orchestrating integration testing, orchestrating this kind of work in a highly automated fashion so that we are continuously doing that kind of testing and continuously doing that kind of validation every single time we make a change. This is probably the one that we see the most often wanting to be integrated with SAP. And let me give you a great example. Let's say I have a web application and that web application requires a change or a new feature like a web service on the SAP backend. They need to flow together. They need to come together. And so I got to hit QA with my transports and I got to hit QA with my web services at the same time in order to make sure that I can do that testing. Jenkins can orchestrate that kind of workforce. In fact, that's a specific example we're going to get into here in a minute. Now, another kind of integration that we commonly see is called continuous delivery. And, and Chef is really a configuration delivery manager. We'll often see it paired with Puppet. But the point of, of this little description here is Chef is tooling that allows us to be able to automatically create and provision systems that we need in order for a change to take place. So for example, example, additional databases or additional web servers or other additional infrastructure. Now in SAP, this is probably most represented by the concept of a configuration transport. Um, and, and that would be something that would need to be deployed in order for workbench transports that use those new table references and new object references in order to be able to leverage, right? So, same kind of concept we have over in SAP. Well, this kind of tooling has been out there outside of SAP for a very long time. Okay, so those are three examples that I've picked outside of SAP. What's it look like inside SAP to do those very same kind of things? Well, if you guys have been watching this space, you know that ABAP Git is, it's a serious thing at this point, right? There's been a lot of effort brought to this idea of getting a modern version control system and allowing for being able to do things like parallel and team development in a much more elegant fashion than we traditionally have in SAP. Well, there's been a ton of effort been put into that with this idea of ABAP Git. And in fact, there's quite an open source community around it. Um, and, and it's really quite a neat development. In fact, we are using this technology here at Basis. We're using it for our primary code development. And uh, some of my colleagues from our engineering side of the house that they've actually done webinars on this particular topic. So I really encourage you to reach out and take a look at that, that legacy content. If you wanna see how we're using it, how we deploy it and have modernized our own software development practices here at Basis Technologies, and we're mostly writing ABAP code, um, go grab those webinars and take a look. The second technology that I'm gonna introduce in this presentation is Active Control. This is a solution from Basis Technologies. And the easiest way to describe it is as a full DevOps stack for SAP. So being able to provide everything 
from backlog management to continuous integration to continuous delivery, all your transport management, all your change control, all of that kind of functionality. That's what Active Control does. And one of the really cool things about Active Control is it's designed with modern DevOps in mind. So it already has built into the solution, the integration points we need to orchestrate and align the work that our friends outside of SAP are doing and inside SAP as well. But it's more than just you know, the orchestration layer. It also has all of the capabilities of providing that DevOps-like functionality in SAP itself. So if, you're, if your goal is not you know, integrating with the rest of the organization, but just modernizing, well, we got you covered there. And let's dig in and take a look at how that works. All right. This is this is going to get into the weeds, but we're going to have some fun talking through some integration examples. So I've prepared several. We're going to talk about a basic ITSM service model um, and how you would be able to integrate something like, say, a ServiceNow or even a JIRA used in a ticketing fashion with a workflow inside and outside of SAP. We're going to look at backlog management, which is a, a, a staple of how Sprint is sprints are managed and those kinds of things. We're going to look at automating automated testing. Uh, with Jenkins. We're going to look at parallel development like we see outside of SAP all the time. Uh, and then we'll talk about CICD. Okay, so how this stuff fits together. On the top, you can see active control providing the core functionality that we need for backlog management, continuous integration, and continuous delivery. Below, these are common examples from the open source world that we see used in parallel for the same style of functionality outside of SAP. So for service management, for backlog management, using a JIRA or a ServiceNow in an enterprise capacity is completely normal. We're actually going to do a specific look at using both integrated with Active Control to provide uh, synchronized backlog management between larger scope projects and the change needed in SAP itself. That's coming right up next. In continuous integration, we talked about Jenkins, uh, how about Git, several other different tools there. Some of you that have been doing ABAP programming for a while are probably familiar with BPCA, Code Inspector, ABAP Unit, uh, Test Cockpit, these kinds of things. I I'll ask this question. Why shouldn't all of those SAP tools, as good as they are, be completely automated in the way that we do SAP change? Why should any of that stuff have to be run manually? Why isn't it just completely automatic and, and completely automated? And we'll take a look at it doing exactly that. And then finally, we'll see how to solve for transport deployment itself, the concept of CD and SAP. Uh, even, even doing things like integrating with cloud, uh, we'll talk a little bit about that as well. All right, so here we go. Let's talk about ServiceNow first. This is one of the most common integrations that I see uh, in practice at my customers. And generally, the requirement comes in in a very simple way. The idea is, hey, we use ServiceNow for everything else. How come we can't use ServiceNow for, for understanding what SAP change needs to be? coordinating it with change that might happen concurrently with other systems where we've got dependencies, but most importantly, just updating a uh, service now so that we can keep our audit logs and keep all this stuff in one location. Why does SAP have to be a unique animal? Well, it doesn't. So let's look at how this walks through. There is no reason not to create an integration that allows you to put all of your SAP change tickets in service now. Simply identify the SAP team that's necessary. An active control will integrate with ServiceNow and automatically pick that up and go into the dev system and create the necessary transports to handle the, the, the change, as well as move all of the requirements that are unique to SAP into a local backlog where the ABOP or, or the configuration creator can go ahead and create those transports. That work is done, and then active control brings to the balance automated analysis to make sure that that transport change is going to be safe. And this is the continuous integration part. So are we accidentally overriding objects that are, um, you know, that don't need to be touched? Are we touching sensitive objects? Or I mean, there's a whole litany of different things that can go wrong, but active control will do all of that transport analysis for us and make sure that we're not doing the common overtakes, overrides, and other mistakes that are typical of transport handling, especially as we're dealing with a very dynamic production support environment. And there might be quite a stuff, quite a, you know, a litany of stuff in flight at any one time in terms of, of change requirements and those kinds of things. So what we're looking at down here, of course, is the transport path itself. So once our developer thinks the work is done, it goes through a peer review. And as long as peer review is passed, hey, we let ServiceNow know that that ticket's been development complete, and we're going to go ahead and move that change into QA. And Active Control automatically moves the transports into QA and gets them ready for the QA team to be able to do their work. That testing commences, and maybe now we're doing a much more robust level 
of transport validation itself that would include things like dependency management or very detailed analysis of version history and those kinds of things that ensure in addition to the functional testing, we're not making uh, the technical transport handling mistakes that can happen, um, you know, and, and that we're probably using Excel spreadsheets to manage right now as, as SAP people. Um, that doesn't need to happen anymore. Let's use automation to be able to solve that. And guess what? Because of past testing, we automatically update the ServiceNow ticket, and now the organization knows that it's moved forward. Most of my customers want to use ServiceNow as the central point of final approval. So they don't want anything to be eligible for production release until it's approved in ServiceNow. And you know what? Without that integration, they're having to copy those approvals into two different systems and keep track of it in two tracks and synchronize that. You know, automatically keeping all this stuff together, that's very much a tenet of the DevOps tooling as well, so we don't have to do all that manual work. So once Active Control gets that approval from ServiceNow, then it schedules the import of those transports into production, which can happen on a schedule or a uh, specific import time where we're not likely to cause short dumps and those sorts of problems. But yet another layer of analysis is going to happen here. Am I moving transports that are going to be disruptive to the rest of the release pattern? Do I have every single other object reference satisfied so that I'm not moving a transport that worked in QA that's going to fail in production because it's missing objects that it's dependent on? All of those kinds of things are done automatically and also transport ordering. I want to add one more really important point here. Active control can allow the maintenance cycle to be highly dynamic as well. So for example, we may have no perspective until the night before production release exactly what's in a release. That is a, that's a thing about Agile, right? You've got a constant stream of different change coming into the environment. That is like anathema to an SAP person. But let me tell you, it can be safe. If you've got the right tooling, the right automation, and the right analysis in place, there's no reason not to allow that mixed bag of stuff to come in at any one time and satisfy any number of different parts of the organization with the change on a given evening. And yes, I think it's absolutely practical to start getting to nightly production releases to SAP. We've got lots of customers that do it. So once that's met, then of course we can move into production, validate production, and go tell ServiceNow that, that everything's done and the ticket can be closed automatically. So that's a nice little example of an ITSM integration. Let's dig in and look at what it looks like for um, backlog management. So you know, in, in practice, the, the difference between backlog management and ITSM change management is not much, but the philosophy behind which is which is very important in my opinion. I think of ITSM as break fix. I think of it as production support. I think of it as the stuff that we've got to do, and we've probably got to do it in a fairly asynchronous fashion across the enterprise because the business is demanding immediate change. When I talk about backlog management, really what I'm talking about is what do we know we want to do as an organization in terms of providing new feature, new capabilities, new functionality for the business, but we're going to schedule when it gets released, right? We're going to plan for this. It's going to be a project. Okay. So in JIRA, we might go ahead and create what's called a customer story or a change request. And that customer story would have a, a description of why the work is being done, how it's valuable to the business, the functionality that's required, you know, very much different than a break fix idea, right? But just like we saw with ITSM, Active Control will pick that up, realize that there's both web and SAP and mobile and who knows what else in that business request and pull the SAP portions of it down into our development environment and go ahead and create the container for our developer to be able to write their code and their configuration changes against here and do that work. We might also be orchestrating that change. For example, we may already realize at the time of the backlog entry that we're gonna to have to orchestrate change between, um, between web and SAP at the same time. We might realize all those kinds of things. And, and again, that's one of the other real values of automation is we can keep that thing in line and keep that stuff orchestrated in sequence. So just like we saw before the developer does their work, we use a lot of continuous integration tooling inside of Active Control to make sure that that work is properly tested, that it goes through all the proper rigor, that it goes through all of the um, change control and all the peer review and everything else that's necessary to ensure that a new piece of functionality has been properly implemented according to the organization's criteria and requirements. The other thing that may happen, let's say we've got a long running project. This happens all the time, right? It's a project that's more than a sprint. And the business realizes that priorities need to change 
And so other features are going to get prioritized ahead of maybe this one that we've already done some work on. So let JIRA do that. Let those priorities change. Let the dev system have an extra container to create, create those transports again and things like that. We'll automatically orchestrate the move into QA as that feature needs to move, even as that backlog and those prioritizations are changing completely dynamically. And, and, and for those of us that have used transport management solutions that are built around the idea of a maintenance cycle where it's fairly rigid and all the change that's going to be made is fairly predetermined. I mean, this is obviously something that's very, very hard to do, but with a combination of JIRA and active control. And again, we use both of these tools internally ourselves. This is completely commonplace and it's completely handled automatically by the system. So once we get past our priority prioritization here, we've got our peer review, we get approvals. Of course, you're probably using a Kanban board to keep track of all those changes in an agile fashion in JIRA, and we're able to move that coupon forward into the cycle automatically. Those transports get released, they get moved into QA, more continuous integration is done automatically by active control, all our testing is done, we may even have more prioritization changes as a result here. That's okay, we'll just let the system handle that automatically. And again, we're keeping the JIRA status updated with the movement of this particular change all along. And then finally, at some point, a release is prepared. And there's a set of features that are gonna make it into production. Maybe they're being coordinated with, with the web. Maybe they, you know, additional testing needs to be kicked off and automatically uh, orchestrated, those kinds of things. That's fine, let all that happen. But when the final approval is given, we get that information. We know to collect those transports of what, what changes have been approved to move into production. And only that is automatically sequenced and moved into the production environment. And we go ahead and close out the sprint or close out the tickets that have been created in, in uh, JIRA to handle those backlog changes. So lots of points of integration, systems being updated automatically, handling the SAP unique criteria while at the same time having the exact same workflow that our colleagues outside of SAP are used to, no problem at all. And it works really, really well. And again, we use this stuff in, inside our own house to, to a great extent. Let's talk about bringing testing into the fold here. Let's use Jenkins to do it because Jenkins does a great job of orchestrating all kinds of work during the course of a build. So a lot of the same things happened here where we, we create the work, um, we do a little bit of CI, make sure it's ready, we get it ready to leave production. And then let's say in this particular example, we've got a situation where a web change and a, a, a SAP change need to go in concert. Jenkins would kick off movement of not only the stuff on the website, but also the transports into QA at the same time so that our environments would be aligned. The QA web environment is, is aligned with the current version of what's in QA and SAP, and we're ready to go ahead and kick off perhaps some very sophisticated end-to-end -end testing and these kinds of things that have all been created using various different test tools and, and are now ready to go ahead and kick that off. In my opinion, you're probably already doing uh, things like running ABAP test cockpit and ABAP unit and, and these sorts of things here as well. And all of that might be orchestrated by active control and all those reporting going back to Jenkins at the same time. We might do manual testing here. We're of course updating Jenkins with the results of the tests that are done inside the SAP container itself. So it knows whether or not to suspend the entire orchestration if it's more than just SAP. And we're moving down the transport line as that particular um, set of continuous build and continuous integration tasks are taking place. The other trend here that I think is really important with something like a Jenkins, outside of SAP, this idea of continuous testing has become very, very commonplace. Um, and so basically the idea is essentially anytime someone press go on a compiler, you're running a whole suite of tests because you've got the infrastructure and the back end behind it uh, to orchestrate that work and find defects, frankly, as soon as the code leaves the developer's desktop. There is absolutely no reason you can't do identical same thing inside of SAP. Um, using SAP tools, like perhaps even our own testimony, if you want to get into that robust level of, of regression testing, but certainly ABOP unit and so on. No reason why those tools can't be integrated into this workflow and become a common practice that you do every single time you touch any object in SAP. In fact, it's great practice to do that. So let's take a look at the last one. This is by far the most complicated. Um, and it's probably the biggest change to the way we think about doing software development in SAP that I'm going to talk about. And that is using ABAPKit. So back to my little story about using version control systems to be able to create for each developer, you know, all the different paths, all the different branches, maintain all the different changes, maintain everything 
that a developer does and avoid the conflict that so often happens um, as multiple developers in a large team are all working on the same project at the same time. I mean, this is the whole purpose of a really good, robust version control system, among some other things. You know, when I describe SAP software development to my friends that don't have any ABAP experience, and, and, and guys, don't shoot me for making an over, another oversimplification here, but I'm like, it's as if everybody's using Notepad in the same shared folder on a Windows server. I mean, it's just a free for all in there. We're all on the same system. We don't have any of the tools that we're used to. I mean, it keeps track of changes, but, but not like we know keeping track of changes, guys. So, so what could happen if we could bring that kind of experience that us developers out there in the Java, C Sharp, C++ world had and bring that to SAP? Well, we can, and we're gonna use ABAP get to, get to get there, and we're gonna to have to do a couple of little things, but it's a really neat way to think about software development. I'm sure everybody has heard of N and M plus one environments. And in fact, certainly I've talked with a number of customers that don't use N plus one for projects simply because the management of the change and the reconciliation called retrofit formally is such a nightmare. And there's such a high probability that you're gonna accidentally reintroduce regression and other issues with having multiple parallel environments. They just don't do it. So the drawback of that, of course, is that we only have your single path of dev to QA, to production, and it's inherently not agile. It's inherently locked down, and it's inherently very difficult to do a large amount of parallel work uh, in a development organization, and, and, and this will just not scale. So the idea that every developer could have their own working path and that automation and a version control system would allow each different chain to be reconciled and understood if it could be safely merged or require two different developers to merge those changes together for a given release pattern. Well, this is exactly how the entire rest of the software development world works. So let's bring that to SAP. And it looks like this. So just like we would have in, you know, in a distributed environment, using ABAP Git, each developer uses a, a, a Docker container or a small VM and has essentially their own development environment that they're able to do their work in. So this allows them to check the code out of the uh, ABAP Git, make all the changes they want in their own private instance of SAP for all practical purposes, do all of their local unit testing, do all of their normal local work. And when they believe their changes are ready to move on and that they're ready to go up to the regular development rigor process, they go ahead and check that stuff back into the central Git repository. And maybe they're making changes on a team basis or a ver version basis, something like that. But nonetheless, they go ahead and check all of that work right back into the system where it's kept in the central repository. Now, at any given moment, we still need to go through perhaps a main development or perhaps if we're in the case of production support or a project in plus one landscape. So we're gonna use Jenkins and Jenkins is gonna access that central Git repository and move all of the current versions of objects from a given branch or even maybe even several branches if we can combine them without conflict into a traditional SAP development system where we can start to go through the regular path of release. Now, this is where active control steps in and really starts to handle all the automation for you. So now that I have what's going to be a release in a dev system, I might need to worry about doing things like automatically retrofitting from production support to make sure some of my project changes aren't going to reintroduce regressions or other problems. I might need to look at object collision and conflict in order to be able to automatically detect when two different developers have made a change at the same time. And we're going to have to force a merge condition safely in order to prevent an overwrite or an overtake from causing a development problem. But again, all of that is completely done automatically. And we've given our developers the tooling they needed all up until this moment to do everything entirely in parallel and without conflict with each other. The, the, the dream model, the most agile model that we've been trying to get to in SAP all along anyway. Once it hits development, you guys know the pattern. We're gonna go dev, we're gonna go QA, we're gonna go production, we're gonna use automation to do all of our transport analysis, we're gonna use automation to do all of our unit testing, all of that kind of integration in CI. We might even have a final um, pre-prod test cycle where we do some smoke testing with human users doing end-to-end -end and those kinds of things. And with cab approval, then you know, Active Control is gonna pick that up and move it into production. So this is what that looks like when it's used in practice, and again, if, if you want to see um, a lot more information about this, we, we have several webinars available because we do this internally. This is exactly how we practice software development inside our own shop. All right. 
So how does that shake out? Let's take a look at a customer example. We can see where a customer might use an Agile tool, JIRA, CA, Agile Central, take your pick, doesn't matter, and create their business requirements. The SAP portions of it are transferred to Active Control to create an assignment to an ABAP developer in order to implement that change. All of this kind of stuff about making sure we update the system, know when there's trigger events, when we move transports, any of that kind of work is all done automatically because of the integration between the different pieces of tooling that are used. And by the way, GitLab is, is a competitor to Jenkins. So uh, it's a CI tool as well. As we step through the process, you're just seeing the code move in an orchestrated way through the different parts of the software development process. And as those events take place that we need to do things like deploy to dev or move something into QA or, or do a rejection or update a Kanban board or any of that kind of work, that just becomes a natural part of the integration workflow that's done automatically because we've assembled all of these parts together all the way until we do our final testing and we get everything approved for release into production. It can absolutely work this way if you want it to, and we can help you automate all of that stuff to make it work in SAP just like it could, or just like it does very frequently outside of SAP. There's no reason not to adopt Agile and DevOps in SAP and, and, and have an integrated experience across your entire software development orchestration or organization. So back to that um, you know, view of the entire ecosystem. Talk to your developers outside of SAP about what kind of tooling they're working. I think you'll find a parallel inside of AC or inside of, of SAP with either Active Control or ABAP Git. Um, and com combining those two together and using integration and using uh, automation tools inside of SAP, uh, they're there. There's no reason we can't get to this much more modern approach of how we do software development. And uh, let, let, let's go for it, right? It's absolutely something we can do. So if you do this, what should you expect to get? I think the biggest thing is you're gonna find that you're gonna have a much higher tempo of release and you're gonna have a much higher quality of release. Um, it is not uncommon for us to work with customers and move them from biannual releases to, to weekly or even nightly releases and reduce, reduce the number of outages that they have at the same time. The methodology works, it's absolutely there. It's been around a long time and there's a reason it's become the staple outside of SAP. It absolutely does work. But all this automation pays some dividends in terms of consistency, quality, and the reduction of manual effort. So instead of using spreadsheets to do this kind of object tracking, we're letting the system do it automatically. Those kinds of problems all get solved for us. And likewise, then, we can align our SAP and software development teams outside of SAP on the same tempo, on the same release schedule, bring the functionality that these teams need to work together uh, in a coordinated, orchestrated way and align release there. Um, and, and of course, then, because of the reconciliation to the tool, we've got cross-team visibility. We've got all the, uh, the benefits of understanding collaboration and how the teams are working together and where there's opportunities to continually improve once we get to that point of, of automation. But I want to add one more little piece of advice around getting there. So we've talked about a lot of stuff that is not going to get assembled in your organization if you've done it, never done it before overnight. That's a fact, and that's okay. Let's pick a piece of low-hanging fruit and go do one thing. Maybe version control is really important to you because you've got a lot of parallel projects and you're facing an S4 HANA um, you know, situation where you've got lots of parallel tracks that need to happen and you just don't have the infrastructure to pull it off cleanly. Okay, great, let's go pick off version control. Maybe you've got orchestrated release when you need to be able to do integration testing between Windows and SAP together and you don't have a way to do that other than you know, fire off emails and, and ask everybody to stay late on a Wednesday night. Okay, let's go solve for that one problem first. Pick one of these examples that you've seen and let's go bite off a little bite and just add it. And the thing is, is just like Agile itself, incrementally over time, your organization will get better and better at this kind of automation, better and better at this type of integration. And before you know it, you'll have a very robust build environment that does almost all of this work for you automatically. Let's just go ahead and adopt the methodologies we know work. Let's bring them to SAP. Let's be more successful uh, in our professional disciplines around software development inside of SAP. So before I hand it back to Pete, I want to say thanks for hanging out and uh, participating in our little chat today. This is my personal contact information. And if you'd like to see some of the technology live, please reach out. I'll be happy to set up a demo with you.
Um, if you're outside the United States, I have colleagues in both APJ and in Europe. We'll be happy to get you in a local time zone. Uh, but feel free to reach out. And, and I, I appreciate the time this morning and uh, hope you have a great day and, and got something out of it as well. Pete, back to you. Okay, well, thanks very much, Jim. Uh, covered a, a lot of ground there. Um, We've got a few questions that have come in, so we'll come to those in a second. We'll try and squeeze a couple in. We're, we're almost up to time, but before we do that, just a quick recap on a couple of bits of admin. As I've mentioned, we are, uh, we ha we are recording today's session. We will send a link to that out to everyone who's registered, um, and of course, including everyone on the call. So if you don't see that and you want it, do get in touch and let us know. And as Jim has said, you know, we'd be more than happy to discuss any, any of the points from the webinar in more detail. Um, regarding other webinar content and particularly the ABAP Git webinars, we've had a couple of questions come in about that. Um, on the Basis Technologies website, basistechnologies.com, uh, in our webinar page, you can find all of our previous webinars, including two on ABAP Git, uh, which show actually a proof of concept a workflow using ABAP Git and Active Control, as Jim has described. Um, and you can just search for that on the site as well. If you search for ABAP Git, you'll find those. Um, and there's a bunch of other webinar content around. DevOps automation and testing on there as well. So uh, do please feel free to take a look at any of that. Um, just quickly looking into uh, a couple of the questions here. Um, so uh, question here is why do I still need to use Active Control with ABAP Git? Can't I just use ABAP Git and Jenkins to, to deploy everything? That, that's a great question. And, and the primary reason why is uh, ABAP Git basically ends at your dev instance. So you wouldn't have any of the automation that we've discussed in terms of being able to send the transports down the line and align it with other orchestration or um, with all the automation that Active Control provides in terms of the basic transport management. The other problem is, is you're probably going to use ABAP Git to frequently deploy into an N plus one, N plus two, N plus N project channel. And Active Control is going to provide all of the safety net and reconciliation to be able to automate retrofit between those multiple paths and multiple projects happening at the same time. So, you know, ABAP Git is great, but it solves a portion of the problem, and that's why you need Active Control as well. Okay, yeah, and again, just to reiterate, uh, we go into that in, in quite a lot more detail in the other two separate webinars we've got. We've mentioned a number of times today, but we'll, it's a it's a it's a quite complicated topic that we dig into a lot more there. Um, We've got a, a specific question around PI and PO, Jim, that maybe you can talk about in, in more general terms for the audience as well. But one of our audience has a, a specific challenge with um, integrating PI and PO testing with transport control in those environments. Um, but just in the sort of broader question outside of core ECC, is there any reason why the kind of things you, you, that you've described today can't apply to those other kind of SAP modules? No, and in fact, you know, if we go back and look at one of these automation slides, if you don't mind, I'm going to jump back a, a slide or two here. You know, when we're talking about this transport path here, this could be any ABOP or any CTS plus managed environment. So we could be talking about native HANA transports. We could certainly be talking about PI, certainly be talking about BW. It's really anything ABOP and anything CTS plus that the points of integration that Active Control is going to provide are going to be the same in all of those situations. And, and even the transport path itself could be very highly customized and unique to your environment. Not a problem for Active Control. It's designed to support that kind of environment. Okay, cool. Um, we've got what is, a, I think, a straightforward question here, but I think it's good to cover it because if it's coming, clearly we should just... Uh, reiterate and um, one of one of the uh, audience has asked us if these uh, ServiceNow and Jira integrations are completely automatic i.e the, there's no kind of double entry you don't need to to maintain both do you want to just quickly recap um yep. on the concept there yeah they are they are absolutely two-way integrations there is no swivel chair cut and paste this kind of thing the whole purpose of them in many ways is to make sure that that single pane of glass that gives you your enterprise-wide view is consistent and then automatically manages the, the relationship to the SAP specific components both ways, keeping both systems updated. So absolutely two-way integration. Okay, um, and I think uh, I think this will be our last question actually, just uh, looking at what we've got here and the, and the time left. Um, 
So just paraphrasing, what about um, Eclipse and SCP, SAP Cloud Platform Development? Can, can we use Active Control in that kind of scenario? Obviously something a bit newer in terms of SCP that some organi organizations are looking at. Yeah, again, it's, it's as far as the transports themselves, it's down to that question of is it ABOP or is it um, you know, CTS Plus? And, and, and as long as the answer is yes, we've got some facility there. I, you know, we would we should have to ask our, our engineers, but I am pretty sure we use Eclipse for ABOP editing almost exclusively inside as well in our organization. I know it's very popular with the developer of, of testimony. So, uh, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm not personally doing that kind of work at the moment, but my understanding is Eclipse is, is totally compatible. So, but I guess what we're saying there and to kind of round off a couple of those questions is that what we've talked about today, obviously we've taken a, a subset of the some of the key integrations, most common integrations, but this topic more broadly is something that you can apply to different SAP modules or to some of the newer platforms and approaches like SCP and cloud-based development that are happening out there. Yep. Okay, great. Well, uh, Jim, thanks very much for taking us through all of that content today. Um, thanks to all of our audience for joining us. Um, as always, uh, we would, uh, recommend you know to keep an eye on on your emails and the basis technologies website for future basis technologies webinars we have a regular series typically uh, one a month on different topics around devops and testing so we hope to see you again soon in another one of these sessions and in the meantime thanks very much for joining us and have a great day